Analysis complete. Memory unit RR003. Code name Pandora Savant. Looks like the same thing I'm wearing. Memory visualization headset prototype. What was that? Z to screen text? Oh, I see. Huh, I can scroll up and down it. Confidential. This document contains sexual information. Disclosure to others without written consent is prohibited. Hmm. Date on who drafted it was... It's the year 2015. Yeah, it's the year 2015 last I saw, so this was drafted in early 2014. So, quite recent. Twenty second of June, twenty fifteen. The first asylum. Name John Keating. Hair red. I don't suppose that's the person named Red. Probably not. Age... 40? Hmm, this document must be quite old. If the age is 40 and they were born in 56, this document must be fairly old, because the current year is 2015. So if that was their date of birth, then they'd be much older than 40. Like 60 or 70 or something. The patient was an English literature teacher at Sunnerfeld High School. But after a car accident, he developed a possible Kluver Bucci syndrome? Case information. Two weeks ago, the patient was injured in a car accident, and when he finally came to, he displayed some curious symptoms. He was unable to recognize family and friends, was unusually calm, almost apathetic, and would frequently try to put different objects in his mouth. For example, his notebook, empty paper cups, a uh, hyper. Hyper... what is that? Hyperorality? Um, after being diagnosed, the patient was transported to our facility, whereupon we commenced some sort of treatment, some sort of drug treatment. Let's see who they are. Uh, Walt Kaufman. Special handling. Constant supervision definitely not required. Patient suffers from anxiety disorder and possible depressive disorder. Outwardly calm when any and all decisions are made by a third party, yet agitated when left to make choices themselves. Submissive and inactive by nature, patient will quickly become anxious and argumentative if left alone for long periods. weird. This doesn't make any sense. This obviously is super high-tech stuff. And yet, these patient files are from, like, 30 years ago. Five eighteen. Oh, I forgot which uh, patient that arm was from that we scanned a little while ago. Does it uh, say by any chance? It would be in our memoirs. Bipolar. Major depressive disorder. Alcoholic. Hallucinosis. Puppet master worshipper. What? I mean, we did see that puppet in that closet. Is that related to the, the puppet master? Let 
Leonard Shelby. Uh, constant supervision required. Morbid thoughts and suicidal tendencies place this patient in a high-risk category of potential self-harm. Hmm. Now hold on, I saw three bars of... Three bars of evidence. <laughs> on my phone. It's like three bars throughout the entire thing. Never four bars, though. Hmm. Hey. Hey, friend. Over here. You got out. How did you get out? You can't leave me here. Just hang on. What's going on here? Where are we? Please, you've got to help me. The switch there, it opens this door. You, you have to help me. Match found. Samson John L. Patient number 39. Well, before you let them out, 309. Is that one of the ones on the board back here? Mm-mm. I don't really know what I just did. Uh, what does that connect to? Just open the door! Get me out before he pushes me back in! Okay, so it looks like I would have had to do that to press the button anyway. Also powers this. Hmm. Okay. Nothing makes me feel like I'll regret this, as someone saying you won't regret this, and then the game saying your actions will have consequences. Heart of Darkness, Horrors of the Asylum. Built in 1962 to house 500 inmates, Lithurst Asylum had over 2,000 patients at its peak in the mid-80s. Fifteen years later, the facility was forced to close due to allegations of numerous ex-patients together with a series of newspaper articles regarding shocking and unorthodox treatment used by director of the institution, Dr. William Benway. Hmm, I'll, I'll let you read the rest of that if you want. To ignore them, Mr. Black. If the treatment is to succeed, I need your cooperation. Yeah, sure. This really is a video game. Adding on to the list of all the things I mentioned before, we're also in an asylum now. Uh, I guess... Oh, that's page two of this article. Then we give the patient... Patients LSD with the instruction that they must now discover their inner selves. You can read the rest of that if you want. I... Doubt any of that's important? I don't see what this institution could have to do with much of anything, unless they're just using it as a place to test out this memory device thing. But aside from that, I don't think the past history of this place would really matter, I suspect. Samson Charnel. Oh, that's the person we just let out, yeah. Okay, so here's where we're going to find out that it was a terrible idea to let them out. Patient worked as a door-to-door -door salesman, but after suffering a mental breakdown, became, became a self-proclaimed cult leader. Okay, cool. Awesome. So they're the puppet master or something.
No you. I can't tell if that's the person we let out or somebody else. Criminals, ex-military, who the fuck am I? And why the fuck am I armed? I understand your curiosity, but there will be time for questions later, Mr. Black. Please, proceed. John Linden. Patient suffers from severe memory loss, making it impossible for him to differentiate fantasy from reality. Locked. Of course it is. First birthday, second birthday, fourth birthday? No, no, never third, never, never. Someone there? Yes. Someone. Someone. Real. That's the one we just read, right? I don't remember where that paper was. Oh, here it is. Yeah, John Linden. So yeah, severe memory loss. Believes he was abducted by some unidentified organization that tried to erase and destroy the patient's memory. Well, it doesn't seem violent. diligent detective, Mr. Black. An admirable quality that will come in quite useful. As we prepare for our first little trip, the more external stimuli you engage with while wearing the Pandora unit, the more effective your synaptic recall will be. Please, continue. Ooh, lots of information here. Counting assets. June 2009. Uh, is that the boss guy that those mercenaries were shooting? Roger Howard. And the weapons of the future. Hey, what was that patient's name? Was it Lyndon Howard? Related to Roger Howard? The Global 2000. Here are the 2000 companies that matter! lower gasoline prices make for confident consumers. Roger Howard, Advanced Defense Strategy CEO. ADS, first floor, Birmingham, West Midlands. So that's not this place, right? I don't think so. That's the corner gun. Looks like there's a couple different versions. Mark 3, Mark 3, Mark 4. Cut off, no cut off. Different version. Hmm. So I'm guessing all this fancy technology was pretty much made by Roger Howard's company, Advanced Defense Strategy. ADS going for the win. Ah, right, Advanced Defense Strategy. Yep. Expected to unveil its brand new project soon. 
The biggest weapon contractor in the UK advanced defense strategy is ready to unveil a new project, rumored to be a modern take on the legendary periscope rifle. As many readers will know, the periscope rifle was revolutionary in enabling a user to remain concealed safely behind cover and fire accurately around corners. We may have to wait a while before getting confirmation on this rumor, but if ADS's previous products are any comparison, this one should be quite literally killer. Birmingham's Glock Tower is open for business. Oh, that's the blueprints we just saw, right? Birmingham's latest tall tower is finally complete, with architects and town planners alike hailing it as an asset to the skyline of the modern Midlands. However, the purpose of the new skyscraper, dubbed Glock Tower by the international press, and much to the puzzlement of local residents, still remains a mystery. Rumor has it that the tower was built to be the new international headquarters for advanced defense strategy, one of the leading arms manufacturing companies in Europe. This would certainly account for the mystery and the curious name the tower has adopted. A Glock is a polymer-framed semi-automatic pistol, explained Aaron Cannon, the lead architect on the project. And while it wasn't intentional, I understand the resemblance that people are making to a handgun. It's really quite poetic, if the tenancy rumors are true, he joked. At 160 meters, our building may not be the highest out there. We didn't really aim for that but we're hoping that its presence will help transform Birmingham into a real big gun on the international trade market, added Nick Schultz, jovially, jovially speaking for Birmingham Council. From Radcliffe Walter to Kieran Chelsea. Uh, our new project has been in the works for a total of 14 months now, and it's worth it. We believe that this latest product will offer a major breakthrough in the field of anti-terrorism and urban warfare. Named the Corner Gun, it allows a mounted weapon to be aimed and fired around corners, minimizing the risk for users' personal safety. Incorporating a miniature HD camera with thermal module and night vision as standard, and a removable repositionable screen, the Corner Gun will grant the user the ability to both observe via live feed and shoot from almost any position. Also, sirens in the background. This live feed can also be redirected to a secondary monitor, such as a command post or control room, allowing for greater distance and safety. The front section of the corner gun can be rotated 60 to 90 degrees in either direction, and the CSP model, equipped with Panzerfaust rocket capability, can be rotated a full 90 degrees, protecting the user from the rocket's backward blast. Essentially, these features will allow the user to mount a range of firearms, including, but not exclusive to, handguns, grenade launchers, and APRs. Precise and easy to control, the pistol alignment can be returned to a straight position in a fraction of a second. Worthy of note, and due to the HD camera capabilities, the device can also be used to monitor high-level threat situations from a safe position. With our current schedule projecting a market-ready product within the next four to six months, I'll update you on our progress soon. Established in the late 90s, Advanced Defense Strategy has quickly become one of the leading manufacturers of small arms in the UK. As of the beginning of the financial year 2007, the company is now the fourth largest defense contractor in Europe. Opened in 1998 by Roger D. Howard, an ex-serviceman and ambitious entrepreneur, Mr. Howard recently said that he always dreamed of merging cutting-edge computer technologies with the latest engineering solutions to create the weapons of the future. In my opinion, spoke Howard, weaponry and defense systems are both fields that should be at the bleeding edge of technical progress. Take the internet, for example. This is something that was extensively used in the US Army, decades before it was available to the wider world. In fact, in certain circles, the World Wide Web is considered something of a museum piece. I think that alone highlights the role of the arms manufacturer, to show humanity the direction we are headed, to show them the future, safely. Oh yes, very safe. Guns are very, very safe. Ah, the is 
slow, even breaths. Patience, Mr. Black, calm. Focus. It'll take the memory unit a moment to calibrate. Something odd about that picture when I look at it. It's giving off an aura. I should probably look at that last. That'd be the ADS building. The Glock Tower. And that, I think, is the quote-unquote the girl in the chair. and allow that image to take you back there. You may feel a little disorientated at first, but you will be perfectly safe. The building in the photo is the headquarters for Advanced Defense Strategy, or ADS. They are, or should I say were, the UK's leading weapons manufacturer. They were developing a weapon known as the Corner Gun, which apparently you remember. Where are we now? This is a very different time now. What was it before, like the 22nd or the 23rd or something? Somewhere around there of June 2015. Now it's the 26th of June 2009. What the fuck just happened? Is this real? The answer is... Slightly more complex than the question, I'm afraid, Mr. Black. It's real enough. For now. Just relax and explore. Okay. Still the prototype. The corner gun. Highly likely. We believe someone hired you. Text message says Robert. Probably Robert Ramsey. Worked for a rival company, FDG. So one company hired me to steal from another. Don't worry about piecing it all together, Mr. Black. Just relax and... And relax and explore. Yeah, I got it. Hmm. Notice how Red's voice keeps changing a bit, too. It doesn't sound exactly like a glitch or like a bad transmission. It sounds like they're actually somebody else. It sounds like a more higher-pitched, more feminine voice they keep switching to. Don't know if that means anything. Blood splatter on the ground. Ooh, blood trail. I don't know if you're actually supposed to pronounce like all the letters there, like Edg Baston, but it's almost impossible for me to pronounce, so I'm just gonna ignore the D. Egg Baston Road closed due to ADS conference. Egg Baston Road in Birmingham is expected to be closed in both directions between Alchester and Cromer Road from 8.30 p.m. on well, that day until 2 a.m. the next day, due to maintenance problems with the underground pipe and water system. Motorists are advised to use alternate routes. Little note there in the bottom left. Uh, we gotta hurry up and fix those pipes before the conference, chaps. Hmm. So Red said that um, ADS was one of the leading arms manufacturers in Europe. Was. What happened?
Choose the scanner app, we'll press F4 to access. Whoa. What the fuck is that? It's quite simple. We programmed in a simulated projection of your real life scanner. It will help you make sense of any inconsistencies in your synaptic recall. Your memories. Okay, so the scanner's not just for finding evidence. I'm not sure how I was supposed to tell that I can get rid of that though. I don't know if it was on the phone or on here or what. It was presenting with information in like four different avenues all at the same time. So it got a little overloaded there and I don't think I caught exactly how I'm supposed to tell those in the future, but I'm sure it shouldn't be too hard. I think when I had the scanner out, it was displaying the anomaly as like a wireframe, sort of. Which is kind of what it looks like when I go to scan, like this. But it was displaying it without me actually scanning, wasn't it? Maybe I'll leave the scanner app open for a bit. To see if that pops up again. An opportunity to engage your mind at last. Now just shoot your way out of the problem. Careful. Those pipes will burn if you get too close. Burn? I thought this was just a memory. It is, but your brain will give you the sensation of being burned. What affects the mind? Affects the body. Cause and effect. This is crazy. Hmm. The heat thing looks helpful. I'm guessing we don't want don't want them to be hot, because that means transferring hot stuff to there, right? Yeah, it's getting cooler. That's pretty cool. It doesn't just like instantly transform into cool, it actually takes some time to cool down. Pardon the pun, but very cool. Figuring it all out. What's going on? Something feels off. Yes, you appear to be experiencing a slight temporal anomaly. You're remembering events in the wrong order. It's just your mind trying to make sense, sense of it all. Perfectly normal. you approach the firing line. Huh. All coming back to you, I see. Kind of. It will soon enough. Oh, you can actually fall, just kind of like teleport you. Crouch and move forward to continue. Betting the corner gun in this position with E will allow you to aim above the cover. Oh.
responsible for? White lights on the side of your phone indicate nearby anomalies. Press Alt to scan with a corner gun. Ah, so the white lights indicate anomalies. Hmm. Whoa, what the heck? I'm back in the ADS building. Technically, you're not even there, Mr. Black. <laughs> what is that? Pistols and ladies magazine. Crunchy snacks. Crunchy chips. Crispy crunch. Crunchy crunchy drink. What? Farmer special. Geronimo? No entry. Huh. Oh shit. Oh, oh, oh. Turn that off. Oh. Probably uh, should have taken a look at my map. Yeah. Actually, I don't see them on the map. Oh, there they are. They're blue, though. What does that mean? The other ones were red. Hmm. Okay, well I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. Looks like we're at the beginning of this section. So yeah, um, initial thoughts. This game is in a lot of ways really silly, but also at the same time I am definitely intrigued. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.